Friday, Saturday, the 14th of June, 2014, day three of the World Cup. And we got Spanish legend Guys Mendieta coming into the studio. Woo! Yeah! Looking back at his country's drubbing at the hands of Holland, we promise not to rub it in too much. Last night's big game didn't disappoint. The Spanish media reaction has been surprisingly restrained and understated. Marca referring to it as world humiliation, whilst Al Pais brushed it off as a mere global meltdown. But we think ex-Swindon striker Jan Arga Fjortov summed it up best. So what happened? Well, Robin van Persie invented the diving lob header, earning him a new nickname, Massive Lobhead. This happened every time Diego Costa got the ball. Ooh. Vincent Del Bosque's face said it all. This is him with Spain winning 1-0, and this is him with Spain losing 5-1. Never ever play poker with that man. You may be wondering why Spain and Holland played in England and France kits whilst the ref officiated in the Spanish kit. Well, I'll try to explain. For each match, the team listed first on FIFA's website is designated as the home side. So Spain receives first choice and Spain selects all red. Makes sense so far. Since Holland's orange clashes with red, Holland must switch to blue. But according to regulations, we now have a case of dark coloured kit versus dark coloured kit. So Spain's alternate kit being all black, FIFA informs Spain that a light-coloured kit needs to be submitted to comply with FIFA regulations. All white is chosen and that's what they're going to wear against Holland. That means Holland can switch to orange, right? Wrong. Orange is deemed to be Holland's light-coloured kit, so white versus orange would mean light versus light. So for this match, Spain will wear white and Holland will dress in blue. Hope that clears it up for you. But there was one person in the stadium who tore it up more than Iron Robin and his name... No, his name is Mark Lawrenson of the BBC. Some of his highlights from the 5-1 shocker were, nobody wants to score in this one. You'll win nothing with squids. And my personal favorite, it does rain. But he saved his best for last. Iron Robin's last shot out of the meat, that one. Poet Lorowet. Huh? Poet Lorowet. Next up. No, not him. Dodgy decisions that are dominating the early stages of the tournament after Croatia suffered some suspect calls against Brazil. Mexico's Giovanni dos Santos had two goals disallowed against Cameroon due to some rather suspect FIFA officiating. So imagine if the man ultimately in charge of all international refereeing had suggested on the eve of the tournament something like the two challenge idea, right? Where managers can appeal decisions during the game, probably reversing these two injustices. That would make him look like an all-knowing visionary, wouldn't it? More cynical minds than ours might come to the conclusion that referees may be coming under, I don't know, some kind of influence that in some way was more than just a coincidence. But we'd never suggest such a thing on this show. Here's Aussie PM Tony Abbott geeing up his team in a special message, but getting Captain Mile Jedinak's name wrong. Ange, Mike and the Socceroos. Well, he did get the manager and the team nickname, right? I mean, two out of three isn't bad. We're behind you, we're willing you on to victory, and I don't know your names. Having any problems completing your Panini sticker album? Well, two mathematicians from the University of Geneva have worked it out that it costs, on average, £449.50 to complete the album. So, save money by following the example of an Oxford couple who are drawing all 639 stickers. Here are some of our favourites. The last time Spain conceded five goals in an international match was in 1963, shipping six against Scotland. Last night's five goals were three more than they conceded in the whole of the 2010 World Cup. In that tournament, Spain and Chile's group saw just eight goals in total. Group B has already seen ten after only two games, and Robin van Persie has now scored in three consecutive June the 13th fixtures. Weird. Cap 40 times by Spain. Gajka Menieto in the studio, everybody. Yeah. Gajka, uh, we're figuring you're feeling a little bit jaded after last night's performance, maybe just a bit. So we got you a present, which is this. Oh, an nice. official Thank you. FIFA World Cup black hat to match your shirt. Well, I'll need it back tomorrow after the England game, yeah? So I'll, I'll come and grab well, it back. Yeah, you never know. Probably an extraordinary game, wasn't it? It was. Uh, it was very, very an excellent for uh, Holland, which I think the, the, the game, or the way Van, Van Gaal planned the game, was straightforward for them. Uh, Counter-attack, quick transitions, obviously with the pace of Robin, Sneijder and Van Persie, worked perfectly for them. Uh, unfortunately for Spain, we defended very poor. Uh, I think you expect a bit more from the players like Ramos, which had a fantastic season for Real Madrid, Piquet, uh, Alba and Azpilicueta. But uh, still got options, still got, have to be positive and think of, of, of Chile and Australia 
uh, and Spain will make it through. And from there, we've learned and, and get better and better as we did in the previous tournament. Superb team performance all round from Holland. Was there anyone that particularly stood out individually for you? The key was the defenders. Um, he nearly brought the whole defenders from, from young, young uh, categories in, in Holland. And Spain never really threat that and test these, these defenders. Uh, I think it was key also knowing uh, how quickly the transition had to be made with uh, uh, Blin quality on the passes. Uh, a different point is obviously Spain really impressed the, the, the way he should have been. But I think Blin with the, two, with the three strikers was, was, was fantastic for, for Holland. And with Spain, I know it's hard to single out one individual player, but where were the real weak links, do you think, in that performance? Uh, well, a few, unfortunately. For me, I think uh, Sergio Ramos uh, would be the one, if I had to pick one. Even though Casillas maybe made a few mistakes, I, th I think he was uh, fouled in the, in the, I think it was the, the, second, the third goal. Um, probably one mistake, but goalkeepers had this. But Ramos uh, has had a fantastic season with Real Madrid. Um, knowing how Holland was going to play, you, you would expect them to either close them down, the, the strikers, or, or, or giving enough space to, to cast them on the runs. And they didn't. And, and that allowed uh, Holland to counterattack too easily. Terrible start, obviously. Is there any way back in terms of qualification for Spain from this group, do you think? Well, certainly they are. Uh, Chile is going to be tough. Uh, we saw last night this team uh, has got quality, it's got intensity. Uh, and now Spain is a matter of, of winning every single game again. Uh, the difference is it didn't seem to me that team that he lost against uh, Switzerland the first game. I think last night a lot of harm has been done and it needs to be re uh, fit and refixed in terms of facing the, the, the next games. They've got to sort it out quickly. You mentioned Chile. It was, a, it was a tough one against Australia, really. Australia quite physical, battled them, but a job done as far as Chile are concerned. Do you think they're favourites to go through in this group now? I think they are. Um, for me, they were, were the, 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 the dark horse in this group uh, with Vidal, uh, with Alexis there in top form, uh, we saw how, how in, intense together uh, with the quality up front uh, they were capable. Although obviously Australia had the chances and that's what Spain had to, had to look at. Uh. Okay, let's cast our eyes on to tonight's games. We'll start with uh, England, Italy, of course. And I think what's dominating that game leading up to it is the pitch and reports that the ground staff are yeah. spraying the pitch that green spray, yeah. uh, to mask how hard it is. And uh, who do you think that will benefit more out of the two teams if the pitch isn't in very good condition? I think somehow Italy, if anything, uh, right. because they, it's, a, it's a very, a very changeable team, a, a, a really chameleonic team. It could play really physical and, and tactical. Uh, at the same time, it could play very, very technical with Pirlo, uh, De Rossi, Marquisio. You got quality players as well. And, and if you look at England team, they got a lot of quality with, with the new young players coming through. So they, they needed the pitch to be in good conditions to, to perform. Do you think Hodgson will start with the younger players? That's one of the other stories dominating things and there's a lot of pressure on him to do that. But that's quite counterintuitive for him, isn't it? To, to throw caution to the wind. He is. And, and you need the balance with the experienced players like he has done. I think the, the, the selection of the players has been fantastic. Now, how he brings these players into the team uh, has to be obviously careful, as you said. But uh, it has to bring them out because they've had a great season and you have to make the most of that momentum. So we'll look at Colombia, Greece first. Um, it's probably the easiest group on paper, isn't it? And it's one that you'd uh, assume Colombia, despite the injury to Falcao, would expect to win. Definitely, because the, the strength they go up front uh, with Baca, with uh, Jackson Martinez, uh, with Adrian, uh, they got so much um, options up there and also Cuadrado on the, on the left side. Two flanks, very, very good quality. So although obviously Falcao will be missed, they, 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 for me they're the favourites uh, to win this game, yeah. But you mentioned Baca, he's your breakout player, isn't he? He's without Falcao there. Baca has had a fantastic season for Sevilla. Uh, they won the Europa League, they scored I think 21 goals. So that's, that's for me the, the player that, that he has to uh, take a step up, take responsibility. And the score in this game? That would be 2 0 for Colombia. 2 0 to Colombia. Okay. Next up, Uruguay, Costa Rica. Tricky one for Uruguay, isn't it? Because Costa Rica finished uh, quite far ahead of Mexico in qualification, so it's not going to be plain sailing for them. It's always going to be. Uh, I think, obviously, a country like Uruguay has always had the responsibility and the, and the pressure to, to do well. Um, Suarez is, is obviously the big man. Every, every national team has a main man that he has to be the leader and take this, the, the responsibility and, and, and the pressure off the shoulders. And for me, that, that is Suarez, although Cavani, uh, uh, Forlan will be there as well. I think Cebolla, the two midfielders, um, really good players. Uh, the weakest point, probably defenders. The Gogodin, but uh, I don't think Lugano is the 
haven't got the pace. So that's probably the weakest point for them. It, it makes them, for me, not be one of the favourites just because of that reason. OK, the score in Uruguay, Costa Rica? Uh, Costa Rica, you got a fantastic goalkeeper, Keller Navas with Levante. Amazing, amazing season again. Uh, I'll go for 2-2. Two, two. All right, England, Italy up next. Uh, we've talked, of course, about the issues with the pitch. In terms of the way that Prandelli's got this Italian squad playing, there's a great piece in The Guardian today about uh, the stability that's in that squad, which you don't often see with Italian national teams. No, you don't. And, and I think he's had the character and, and, and he was brave to change years of history for Italy. We, we, suddenly we saw a team that he could pass the ball, which I think it was very clever when you go Pirlo, players like Pirlo and, and the Rossi and, and Marquisio that are not afraid to have the ball in possession. You have to make the most of that. And he did so and the results were there. Uh, but at the same time, it's very adaptable to go back to, uh, as the roots and, and playing that physical football and tactical. So that's what has made them so, so, so powerful. Uh, obviously, the mentality, the winning mentality, the Italian teams always had. So it's going to be tough for, for England today. Um, that's your second card, isn't it? The head-to-head, -head, Pirlo yeah. versus Rooney. That, I think, is my... Basically because Pirlo, obviously, is the main man for Italy. Uh, very clever. Uh, obviously, other teams have tried to stop it's going to be a big task for Rooney today because probably he's going to play in that hole. He's going to be uh, trying to stop Pirlo. Uh, is Rooney capable of, of stopping and making sacrifices in defence? What's the score going to be in this one? That is tough, probably one of the toughest ones to call, but um, I go for a 1-1. A 1-1. One, one. One, one. OK, and then the late night game, Ivory Coast, Japan. This is the game which uh, features your unsung hero. Yeah, I think uh, Kagawa there has is, is been a great player, maybe Japan, because he haven't got the recognition from from football world. Uh, it used to be a, a national team that it was really physical, but he, he stands out a bit on, on this sort of uh, Japanese football. I, I know a lot of interviews, he loves Spanish football. You can tell the way he plays since he was a kid, he was watching Barca, big fan of Iniesta. So you, 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 when you watch him play, you can tell the talent is there. He tries to, to recall that when he plays, and I think he, he could make the difference for, for Japan. OK, score this one? I think uh, Japan will, score, uh, will win 2-1. Uh, OK, we've heard Geisker's predictions. The battle in our predictions league is raging like Diego Simeone and Nico Kovac going at it over 12 rounds. Alongside the likes of the Guardians, James Dart, Rafa Honigstein, Barry Glendening. We've got Mary, a school teacher from Brazil, uh, who's already beating me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and the boys from Bigodi's Bar in Salvador, who are staunch Argentina fans, naturally enough. Uh, here's uh, Nelito from Bogotá's Bar with his prediction for Uruguay, Costa Rica. Colombia, 2 a 0. OK, let's take a look at Ian Pry's predictions now. He's, of course, the Guardian's head of sport. He's gone for a day low on goals and no fewer than three draws. So we all collectively hope he's entirely wrong about that one. Right, just about it for today's show. You can leave your predictions for England versus Italy in the comments below. Many thanks, Gajka. Thank Give you. it up for Gajka. All right. That hat is yours to take with you. Uh, don't forget, of course, to subscribe because tomorrow we've got comedian Andy Zaltzman in the studio. Yeah. yeah! Looking back over Italy, England, plenty more besides. And for more World Cup content, you can check it out right here. We'll see you then. Now, I need to get you, sir, to sign this okay. any way you want. Sign your name. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Right next to Jimmy Floyd.